Real gases and the van der Waals equation of state going to be the topic of this lesson, and we'll contrast real gases with ideal gases. You might recall that I said that ideal gases don't really exist. Well, real gases really exist. So in the, the first kind of equation that comes up for describing their behavior, which is a little more complicated than the ideal gas law, is the van der Waals equation of state, and uh, that's what we're going to take a look at and explore in this lesson. My name is Chad, and welcome to Chad's Prep, where my goal is to take the stress out of learning science. Now, in addition to high school and college science prep, we also do MCAT, DAT, and OAT prep as well. You'll find those courses at chadsprep.com. Now, this is part of my new general chemistry playlist. I'm releasing several lessons a week throughout the school year, so if you want to be notified every time I post one, subscribe to the channel, click the bell notification. All right, we're going to start by exploring real gases graphically here. So and we're actually going to be graphing uh, pressure on the x-axis and then this ratio of PV over RT on the y-axis, which we call the compressibility factor or compression factor, depending on who you talk to. And uh, if you notice, this ratio is actually equal to N. So or technically, they only ever express this ratio for one mole of gas. And so technically, this ratio, therefore, is equal to one. And so for an ideal gas that's behaving ideally under all conditions, what you'd find is that as you increase pressure, this ratio would equal one the entire time. And that's what an ideal gas would look like, that horizontal line right across the top. Well, in contrast to that, we see that real gas is what, what do gases really do. So, well, again, down at low pressures, they're all not too far from that line. But as the pressure goes up, so you're going to find some deviations in different ways from that line. And so uh, that's what we kind of got to account for. And so what you find out in the case of N2 and CH4 is that at lower pressures, they actually fall below the line. And what's going on there uh, is if you take a look, you actually got some attractive forces that are pulling the molecules in towards the center of the container. And they're, so they're not colliding with the walls as often or with, with as much average force. And so they're not generating as high a pressure. And without generating as high a pressure, this compressibility factor is going to be low. And so when the real lines fall below, the, below that ideal line right there, so it is due to the attractive forces between the molecules. Now, as you jack the pressure up, though, what you're going to find is you're going to start you know, shoving those molecules closer and closer together. So, and you're going to get to a point where, you know, there's not a lot of empty space, you know, uh, compared to what we're used to seeing for a gas. And all of a sudden, the little bit of volume that the molecules do take up matters. And for an ideal gas, the molecules never take up volume and you just follow this line. So, but for the real gases, once you get to really high pressures, so in the case of H2, you don't even have to get to really high pressures, but all of a sudden now the, that volume that the molecules themselves takes up is significant. And as you push them closer together, they're going to start getting, experiencing repulsive forces from each other. And that's what you see when these curves go above that ideal gas line. That's when the repulsive forces take over. Cool, and so you should re realize that on a, a typical graph like this, where we graph again this compressibility factor, which the, the name itself is not important, but you should realize if you ever see a graph like this, that when you're below the ideal gas horizontal line right there, it's attractive forces responsible, and when you're above, it is repulsive forces or the fact that molecules take up volume that is responsible. Now, if we take a look at how we mathematically treat this, we've got the van der Waals equation of state. And like I, I said in the intro, it's not the only equation of state out there. So there are other ones that are better with like virial coefficients and stuff like this. Uh, and ultimately what we do is we actually like, you know, just fit a computer model and, and make an equation out of it. And it gets, you know, even more exact than van der Waals here. So, but van der Waals took an intellectual approach to, to looking at this. And a couple of things you should understand about his equation. So if you get rid of this term right here, and this term right here, just get rid of those, and you're going to be left with PV equals NRT, the ideal gas law. So he inserted these two terms specifically to account for the two things we just talked about. So this first term, this plus AN squared over V squared, that accounts for the attractive forces. So an A here is referred to as one of the van der Waals constants. And so notice if A equaled zero, well, then this term would go away and you'd essentially have no attractive forces. And so uh, we're going to put a, a table of these van der Waals constants up on the screen over here. And what you find out is that the closer it is to zero, the more that gas behaves like an ideal gas. Now, the second term here, this one is going to account for the what I'll call molecular volume the fact that the molecules really do take up some volume, and we're going to try and account for it 
right there. And B here is the other Van der Waals constant. So for each gas, they typically have these two Van der Waals constants, A and B, and you'll find them in tables and you can find them up for different gases. And they've determined what they are empirically by, you know, just doing some measurements in the laboratory and stuff like that. So, uh, but same thing here, again, the closer this guy is to zero, if, if B equals zero for a particular gas, which again, it doesn't. So, but the closer it is to zero, uh, the closer you have an ideal gas, because again, if it did equal zero, this term would go away. So, and you'd have no molecular volume essentially. So, uh, Oftentimes you might get a question, uh, instead of just like, you know, graphically here, you might get a table of those Van der Waals constants and be asked which of those gases would behave the most ideally. And usually you're looking for the gas that has both the smallest value for A and the smallest value for B to be the one that's going to behave most like an ideal gas. Cool. So you should realize what these two correction terms actually correct for as well. Uh, and if you're really unlucky, you might actually have to do a calculation with this Van der Waals equation as well. And that would be a shame, but it does come up. Uh, I will tell you this though, you're probably not gonna have to calculate volume from this equation. So if you rearrange and try and solve for V, you're gonna find out it's a cubic equation, not even a quadratic, a cubic equation. And solving for that without a computer is gonna prove very difficult. So probably not what you're solving for. In all likelihood, you're probably gonna end up solving for pressure if you do a calculation with this. So let's rearrange this just a little bit here. So if you notice, we can take this P right here and set it equal. I'm going to divide by the V minus NB term first. So we're going to have NRT over V minus NB. So, and on this side, we'd still have left P plus AN squared over V squared. Well, I'm going to subtract off that AN squared over V squared term. So, and this is what you'd get in solving for the pressure. And, you know, you have to be told how many moles of gas you have and the temperature and the volume. And then you'd have to have these Van der Waals constants in there. Uh, provided, and then you could go from there. All right, so I've given you a table of Van der Waals constants. I'll probably put it up on the screen over here and stuff like this. And you've got a couple of questions you need to solve. And you've got one mole of CH4 methane gas at a temperature of 100 Kelvin and a volume of 8.2 liters. And you want to calculate its pressure if it's behaving ideally, and then calculate its pressure using the Van der Waals equation as well. So uh, in this case, we've obviously got two calculations here. And with the Ideally, it would be NRT over V. So and we're just going to plug these numbers into our calculator. So we'll start with the ideal one. So in this case, we're told that it is one mole of CH4. So we'll just have one, which obviously I don't really need to put that in my calculator, but times 0.08206 for the universal gas constant, and then times 100 Kelvin. It's already in Kelvin for us. So, and then we're told it has a volume of 8.2 liters. So divided by 8.2, and we get almost exactly one atmosphere. So in this case, it's 1.0007, which I'll just round to three sig figs here at 1.00 atmospheres. Now, a little more challenging here with our Van der Waals equation. So, but it is pretty straightforward. And again, one times 0.08206 times 100, but instead of being just divided by V, we have to subtract off this term here, which really just shows you that, you know, the, the total volume is not all available as empty space because the molecules are taking up some of it, so to speak. That's kind of where that's coming from. So uh, 0.08206 times 100 divided by, and then we're going to have the 8.2 minus, so in this case, NB. Um, and N is still one, but the B is a 0 0.0428 on your table there. So times 0 0.0428, I'll close my parentheses, and then we'll do subtract A N squared over V squared. So A in this case for CH4 is 2.25. And then N is just one mole, so it's times one squared. Uh, and then divided by V squared again, which is 8.2 squared. And we're gonna get 0 0.973 atmospheres. So, and typically the Van der Waals equation is a little more accurate than the ideal gas law equation. So, but especially as you start getting to the extremes. And so in this case, we've, we're actually at a, a fairly low pressure here of one atmosphere. And so it's actually pretty decent. The ideal gas law is not too far off from Van der Waals, but we'd expect this to be just slightly more accurate. So, but if we get to higher pressures, we'd find out that the Van der Waals and the ideal gas law are probably going to deviate a little more. So and the Van der Waals is probably gonna be the more accurate of the two by a fair amount. So that's what the next one's gonna give us here. And so we got 
Now one mole of CH4 at a temperature of 100 Kelvin still, but now at a volume of 0.5 liters. So instead of 8.2 liters, I've lowered it all the way down to 0.5 liters. And with that smaller volume, this is gonna be at a much higher pressure, we'll find out. So if we do the ideal gas calculation here, so in this case, we'll do one times 0.08206 times a temperature of 100, and instead of divided by 8.2, it's gonna be divided by 0.5 and we're gonna get a pressure of 16.4 atmospheres. All right, let's go back into the same thing with the van der Waals. And fortunately, I'm just using my second function entry to go back and pull up that last equation we had. And every, everywhere we had an 8.2, I'm gonna plug in 0 0.5. So we've got 0.08 or one mole times 0.08206 times 100 all over 0 0.5 minus 0 0.0428. Well, actually, it's just the B really, one times the B value. And then close my parentheses and minus, uh, again, 2.25 divided by 0.5 squared. And now we're going to get 8.95 atmospheres. And we got a much bigger deviation going on now. That's not an 8. Cool, and so again, under uh, elevated pressure, this gas is probably gonna be behaving a whole lot less ideally. And that's what we see here where the, the pressure calculated with the Van der Waals equation deviates quite a bit now from the ideal equation. And again, the Van der Waals is probably the more accurate of the two. Cool, but that is real gases, and that is your Van der Waals equation. Not all of you will be on the hook for actually doing a calculation here, but like I said, if you are, it probably will be uh, calculating the pressure. One thing I will tell you, so your, your Van der Waals constants A and B, be careful of your units with them, especially of A. For B, it's usually just, you know, multiplying by moles, and they're gonna give you usually like liters per mole and stuff like that, but be careful of your units. Sometimes you got some conversions to do in there based on the units they give you. I was nice, and I gave you the units that we needed to make this work out nicely. Um, so just be careful if you're running into trouble on a calculation you're doing with it. Now, if you found this lesson helpful, hit that like button. Best thing you can do to support the channel and make sure other students get to see this lesson on YouTube as well. If you're looking for practice materials on gases or anything else in Gen Chem, check out my General Chemistry Master Course, over 1,200 questions, final exam rapid reviews, practice final exams. Uh, I'll leave a link in the description. Free trials available. Happy studying.